Hey guys, in this session we're going to be looking at complex roots. But before we get started on complex roots, let's just look at normal roots first and then you'll get an idea of what complex roots are. So when you think about normal roots, uh, say if I write um, x squared is equal to 4, then you can say that x is then equal to square root of 4, therefore x is equal to plus or minus 2. So you've actually got two roots when it comes to x squared. Um, in this case anyway and then if I do x to the power of uh, 3 and let's say if x to the power of 3 is 8 then in this case um, there's only one unique answer because uh, the cube root of 8 you're only going to get positive 2 you're not going to get negative 2 because negative 2 will make it negative 8 so this is looking at just roots in real 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 plane and if I do x to the power of 4 equals 16 then you could have x is equal to the fourth root of 16. Once again, you'll see that it is plus or minus 2. Now, in complex numbers, you're going to have zn equals to a. So uh, this is where a is a complex number, and then um, you're trying to find another complex number to the power of something equals um, a itself. So for example, um, this could look like this z to the power of 3 equals uh, 2 plus i. So you're looking for three roots that are going to multiply to 2 plus i. All right, or you could have z to the power of 4 equals minus 16. That means you're looking for four roots that are going to multiply to negative 16. So according to uh, De Moore's theorem, all right, if you guys remember De De Moore's theorem, if I was to do zn equals a complex number a, then I can write the complex number in its polar form. So in polar form, the complex number would be r says theta. And now, if I was to apply De Moore's theorem for this, then z would equal r says theta uh, to the power of 1 over n. Okay. Now, if this doesn't make sense, uh, just have a look at this previous example that I did here with x cubed. Um, so if I was to write x cubed is equal to 8, then x is equal to 8 to the power of a third. So that's how that 1 over n comes by. Now I apply De Moore's theorem, and z would then be r to the power of 1 over n, cis theta divided by n. And that's one of the primary things you need to know about complex roots, is using this particular formula here um, with De Moore's theorem. Okay, so the next slide, I'm actually going to give you guys um, the steps that, that you need to work out on to actually find out the actual roots. So with this method itself, guys, uh, you know, I learned this when I was in high school and it's still being applied, but I did find another shortcut way of doing this, and I will show you guys both ways of doing this. Okay, so if we have Zn equals to A, um, split this up. So the first method is that um, you write... The first thing, and this is pretty common with both of my methods, is that you write, you have to write a in the form of r is theta. All right, that's the first step. Number two, um, they, it's better to write this as r is theta plus 2k pi. Or, if you like working in degrees, that you put r is theta plus 360k. Now, you might wonder why I have this 2 pi k and 360 k because um, with um, with these complex numbers is that you know um, I'm going to draw two complex numbers so let's say this is um, 30 degrees this complex number with a modulus of 2 all right so then this could be written as 2 cis 30 but I could also write this as a complex number that actually goes the one full circle so it starts from here and it goes all the way around, which means the uh, module, um, the argument that I'm working with is 360 plus 30, which is 390. So this will become 2 cis 390. But both of these um, complex numbers are the same, except one of them has just gone one, revo one complete revolution extra. But the, the whole purpose of this is for you to keep going around until you come back to the original complex um, number which means in the gap you would find all the remaining um, complex roots. Now, I know this might sound a little bit confusing 
But trust me on this, after we start doing a few examples, things will start making sense. Okay, so once we uh, put this in this format, uh, the third thing is actually applying the De Morris theorem. So if you apply De Morris theorem for this, you're going to end up with r to the power of 1 over n says uh, theta plus 2k pi divided by n. All right, or if you're working in uh, degrees, it's r to the power of 1 over n uh, theta plus 360k divided by pi. And that's what you're getting then. And finally, the fourth step is you substitute uh, values for k. Substitute. Well, I got that spelling right. Hope so. All right, substitute um, for k. And you literally just go k equals to 0, k equals to 1, k equals to 2. And you keep going until you get to this situation where you start coming up with the same answers again. All right. And that's, that's pretty much the four steps for you to actually um, work through um, with this to finding complex roots. Now, uh, the method that I kind of picked up, it really works. It's really hard to kind of explain it in this case, but I'm, I'm going to try it anyway. But I'll probably try it with, with an example. So, okay, let's say if we have Zn equals to A, uh, my first step is still the same thing. All right, it's the same step here is converting A equals to R as theta. Uh, my second step then is going right here. All right, actually, no, the second step is still the same. Uh, third step is write this point right here. All right, so I just put it in the formula, but instead of substituting k and solving again and again and again, what I do is I look at um, what, look at the value of n. All right, so I don't actually go substitute k equals to um, I just do it once, um, and I don't think even you don't even need to do it once because the first one is your first root. So, and again, I'm telling you this makes sense once I start doing an example. All right. So I look at the value of n. Uh, if n is equal to 3, then I have three roots. So what I do is I find one answer and then I add 120 degrees to it. Now the reason I add 120 degrees is because of, of n equals to 3. Because I got 360 divided by 3, which is 120. So I just look at my first root and I keep adding 120 to it. Uh, after two of them, I should have my three roots. Or if n equals to 4, then it has four roots. But because 360 divided by 4 is 90, I just keep adding 90 degrees. Okay. Look, I know this might seem a bit overwhelming. Um, well, let's do an example and then see if things start making sense. Okay, so here we go. We got a question z cubed equals 27 and show these on an argon diagram. Now, I'm going to try and do this in both methods. So let's see how space-wise I go. Okay, the first method is this. I've got z cubed equals 27. Now, the quickest way for me to show you guys how to do this is like, you know, if you plot 27, 27 is going to be in the real real plane. So the modulus um, is going to be, r is going to be 27, and big theta is just going to be 0 degrees. Okay, so that means I can write a z cubed as, instead of 27, it becomes 27 cis 0. So that's my first step. Second step is applying uh, De Morris. Um, well, I'll do this the long method first, guys, so just so you get an idea. Uh, so second step is putting that in a format of z cubed equals 27 cis 0 plus, uh, I'm going to work in degrees in this one, so 360k. Okay, so now the next step is applying De Morris theorem. So z is equal to 27 cis 0 plus 360k and the whole thing is to the power of because it's a third I'm going to be looking at one third so then z is equal to 27 to the power of one third sys 0 plus 360k divided by 3 and that's what I'm looking at so for my first root k is equal to 0 so I write it like this z1 k equals to 0 Therefore, z1 is equal to now 27 to the power of third is 3. So I'm going to get 3 cis 0 plus uh, 360 times 0 is also 0. 
divided by 3, so I've got 3 cis 0 as my first answer. Okay, or not my first root, sorry. And then I look at my second root. So Z2, I'm going to put K equals to 1. Therefore, Z2 equals 3 cis 0 plus 360 times 1 is 360 divided by 3. And what I get is 3 cis, 360 divided by 3 is 120 degrees. Now I'm doing the third root, which is Z3. So for this one, I'm going to put K is equal to 2. So therefore, Z3 equals 3 cis 0 plus 360 times 2 divided by 3. Okay? And when I do this, I get 3 cis 240 degrees. Now, you can literally keep going with Ks, but see what happens if I put Z3 and if I put K equals to 3. If I put K equals to 3, sorry, this should be Z4 here. Let's just get rid of that. That's Z4. So Z4 then is equal to 3 cis 0 plus 360 times 3 divided by 3. And simplifying this, I actually get 3 cis 360 degrees. Now what you should notice is that 3 cis 0 and 3 cis 360 is literally the same thing. So I've actually figured out what my um, three complex roots are. So if I was to sketch this, all right, Z1 is 3 cis 0. So that's Z1 right there. I'm going to put that Z1. Uh, Z2 is 3 cis 120 degrees. So 120 degrees is going to be somewhere there. All right, so that's 120 degrees. So that's going to be Z2. And then Z3 is 240. So that's going to be Z3. All right, so this means this is going 240 degrees. And there's my three complex um, roots for this particular question. So this is doing the first method. I'm going to show you guys the second method now. All right, this is the second method, guys. This is the one that I, was, that I always love using. So it's still pretty much the same thing. So I go Z cubed equals 27. I convert 27 into a polar form. So I'm going to get Z cubed equals 27 cis 0. All right, so which means my um, applying De Morris theorem, I'm going to get 27 cis 0 to the power of 1 third. So Z is equal to 27 third cis 0 divided by 3. So straight away, what I do is like, this literally is my first root. So I can write this as Z1, 27 to the power of third is 3, and 0 divided by 3 is 0 degrees. So this is my first root. Now remember I told you, if I have um, N is equal to 3, then I have three roots, which means I have to add 120 degrees to each root. So, and that's, I mean, I literally can do that because here, then Z2 is going to be 3 cis 120 degrees. Z3 is going to be 3 cis 240 degrees. And if I keep going, you'll notice Z4 is 3 cis 360. But I don't really need Z4 because this is the same as Z1. And now I can plot this. So there's Z1. Uh, there's Z2 with 120 degrees, and then there's Z3, which is 240 degrees, and I'm done. So as you can see, I don't, I'm not really a big fan of that other method because it's just, it's too much, too much work, and I love working with simpler things, and I really work, I like working with this one. So yeah, so the next example I'll show you, I'm going to show you the quick method. All right, let's go. Okay, so we have Z4 equals 1 minus I. So the first step really is I need to write this as a comp, um, as a polar form. So I'm going to kind of just quickly to sketch it up here. So 1, negative 1 is going to be somewhere there because that's positive 1, that's negative 1. So the angle that I'm working with in this case is because it's a 1 and 1, I know that's going to be 45 degrees. But 
I would I'd prefer working in the positive version of it because that's negative 45 really. So I'm looking at 315 degrees. Now, you can work with negative 45. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But just um, remember that in some questions, they ask you to give answers between minus 180 and positive 180. And in some questions, they ask you between, to give you answers between 0 and 360. Uh, I mean, it's just a matter of rearranging the numbers, that's all. Okay, so if this is the case, uh, 1 and 1, and one uh, if I have, I'm just going to draw a little triangle here to show you what happens. So if I have 1 and 1, this becomes square root of 2, um, just using, you know, Pythagoras. So I can basically write Z4 as square root of 2 cis 315 degrees okay so now that's that's my first step my second step is putting it to the power um, applying de Morris theorem so I've got square root of 2 cis 315 degrees to the power of a quarter so my first root in this case is going to be z1 equals square root of 2 to the power of a quarter cis 315 divided by 4. So I can write Z1 equals now square root of 2 to the power of a quarter is, I can write it up as 2 to the power of an eighth because square root of 2 to the power of a quarter, I have 2 to the power of half times a quarter, which is 2 to the power of 8. Says 315 divided by 4, which is 78.75. Okay, so this is my first root, right? Now, going back to my theory, you have n is equal to 4. So you're going to have 4 roots. And if you have 4 roots, you got to add 90 degrees. And that's because 360 divided by 4 equals 90 degrees. So then my z2 equals 2 to the power of 1 eighth, cis, 78 plus 90, which is 168.75. z3 equals 2 to the power of 8, it says 168 plus another 90 is going to be 258.75. Z4 is 2 to the power of 8. It says, what is this going to be? 348.75. Now, if I was to go up another one, so let's say I go to Z5, 2 to the power of 8 will become sys 438.75. But if I go 438.75 minus 360, I actually end up with 78.75. So as you can see, now I've finished the cycle, and that's my, I'm coming back to that original number. So if I was to plot this in a argon diagram, so my first one is at 78.75, so Z1. So that's going to be Z1. And then you have... So this has got to be at 90 degrees, which is Z2, then another Z3, and then another 90 degrees should make it Z4. Cool, and uh, that's it for this session, guys. Uh, apologies again for a long video, but it's just I'm covering a lot of information here for complex roots. Okay, thank you for watching.